Hi, I'm David Leon, and I'm going to share a story told by an old saint, Abba Doroteus of Gaza. Here goes. So I heard about this guy who, when he would go to visit a friend, whose room was in disarray or even dirty, would say to himself, Blessed is this person, because, having deferred his concerns for earthly cares, he has concentrated his mind that much towards heaven that he doesn't even have time to tidy up his room. However, this same guy, whenever he came to another friend's room and he found it tidy and neat, he would say to himself, the soul of this person is as clean as his room and the condition of the room speaks of his soul. In other words, this guy would come across a dirty room and be like, great, would come across a clean room and be like, fantastic. And he never judged another, thinking him negligent and proud, but through his own kind disposition, saw good in everyone and received benefits from everyone. May the good Lord grant us that same kind disposition so that we too may receive benefits from everyone and so that we never notice the failings of others. Okay, so that was the story. So what can we get from that? First off, what the heck, <laughs> basically. <laughs> I mean, I hope it wasn't too confusing, but what just happened was, let me get this straight. I, David Leon, told you, someone else, a story that Doroteus of Gaza, a different guy, heard about someone else and how this other guy commented on the lives of other people. Right. Partly that's just the kind of muddle I find myself getting into. But partly that's just the structure of the universe. <laughs> These minds within minds within minds overheard whispers of rumors of forgotten virtues these stories that people tell each other about someone who once heard that someone truly lived. <laughs> nothing specifically to say about that, just noticing how weird that is. But okay, 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 okay. <laughs> seriously now, more seriously now. First point. Let's go back to that. The soul of this person is as clean as his room, and the condition of his room speaks of his soul. So what can we get from that? Well, pretty simple. The idea that physical space is a reflection of mental space. And to that I would add the slight wrinkle that it goes both ways. So if you're feeling that your life is in disarray or even dirty, then <laughs> revolutionary idea, you could tidy your room and see if that doesn't help you tidy your mind. So, you know, that particular idea, yeah, at least a millennium and a half old. Secondly, Consistency. Consistency is not a universally good virtue. <laughs> I mean, we'll talk about this a lot more when we get to the Chuangzi, my favorite book. But for now, just... So if I recall correctly, in my late teens and early 20s, I feel as if I kind of lived to try to be consistent with myself. As in everything I said and everything I did, I sort of checked it against all my previous actions and then allowing for a few mistakes which should gradually improve, just tried to make them all fit together, fit the same story. And that was, first of all, exhausting. <laughs> you know, an exhausting thing to try to keep track of. But secondly, it kind of almost misguided, right? There's a sort of almost mental OCD of trying to keep all one's beliefs entirely in lockstep with another, which isn't necessarily always good. I mean, not that I thought that anyone <laughs> thought that it was always good, but I do think that in this day and age, consistency is just a little bit overrated. Although, again, a lot more on this when we get to the Chuangzi. Okay, <laughs> those little comments onto the way, onto the essence of the story onto the most important bit right which is yeah seeing good in others seeing the best in others seeing 
from one end, oh, that's great. From the other end, okay, that's great. If the story has a point, it's that that's a good idea. So obviously, going around criticizing this person for being lazy and this person for being uptight and this person for this and this person for that, <laughs> that's horrible. You know, you're a pain in the butt. <laughs> Forget that. That's not, <laughs> nobody wants that. <laughs> Hopefully that should be obvious, right? That's something to avoid. But a bit more subtly, you know, God knows I've fallen into some pretty negative feedback loops of noticing things you don't really like about yourself and then keeping you trying to be mindful of them, trying to keep, you know, noticing them so that you can try to diminish it and then noticing that same kind of thing in other people and having that remind you about how it's something you don't really like in yourself and then noticing it a lot in others and then noticing it a lot in yourself and just <laughs> this story shows a little bit of a way out of that you know in that you don't have to <laughs> in that it might not maybe be the best thing to always being trying to improve yourself morally you know <laughs> maybe just cultivating a kindly disposition towards others and a kindly disposition towards oneself might be good. <laughs> so I guess that was the main thing, right? Don't, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe try not to be so much of a negative Nancy, and, you know, <laughs> it'd be good for you, right? If you could just, <laughs> see the good in things yeah. but the last point is <laughs> when you make a point like this to see the good in others to positive thinking have a positive attitude you know, in, in making a point like this aesthetics counts you know who it is that tells you that counts how it is that they tell you that counts and that's the nice thing about this story you know when i read it i liked abador Ateus and i liked this guy and the particulars of how this very basic point was made resonated with me aesthetically i found it cool i found it beautiful so the basic idea of you know someone going to one place and finding that good and then going to a, the opposite place and finding the opposite also good sure that could be taught any of a thousand ways but the particular way in which it was taught i mean i dig it <laughs> having one extreme being blessed is this person because having deferred his concerns for earthly cares he has concentrated his mind that much towards heaven that he doesn't even have time to tidy up his room and then having the other opposite be the soul of this person is as clean as his room, and the condition of the room speaks of his soul. I mean, like, it's just cool, right? <laughs> I mean, I like religion. I like stories about old monks telling stories about old monks. <laughs> I like that kind of story. And so it sticks just that little bit more than it would if, you know, <laughs> had it been told you know in some other kind of context so that's very simple the last point aesthetics counts so you know life advice will always be broadly similar but the tone and the texture and the tradition right um that it's taught in it, it counts for something it has it has an effect um it has an effect okay so that's uh that's that story that's a few comments on it Hopefully it's both were interesting enough to be worth listening to. And uh, tune in next time for more. Ciao.